we have an 18 year old pledge. Uh, you will be guaranteed education, employment or training if you are leaving school in public age 18 to public residence. We have said, yes, we will open a credit union account for every 11 year old. You can deposit your first 10 pounds so that you understand the value of prudent money management at an early age. Well, we've committed to raising standards in our schools so that at least 70% uh, of uh, children leaving public secondary schools will have five good uh, ACG GCSEs, including English and Math. Those are just three uh, of our uh, commitments. Please do read our manifesto okay. for more. But I want to emphasize, we're the only part of that has serious policies to tackle some of the big issues because we know that our young people in Southwark are facing competition not just from within uh, uh, our borough, from other 18-year-olds when they leave school, not just from other 18-year-olds moving in from uh, other parts of the country, but they're facing competition from 24, 25-year-old graduates moving here from Italy, from Spain, from other parts of the world, and they have to have the qualifications and the skills so they can get those jobs and they can compete uh, and really prosper in this country. Look at the talk. We're debating the future of Southern, not some chip for chat about the EU. We're talking about Southern, not Brussels here today. For the youth services, you're right, we have to do a lot. And let me tell you, last time in the Labour Manifesto, we had that we will give power over 20% of the youth services budget to young people by 2014. Done. Okay, Done. All right. On, on the question of the youth, the challenge. For the TR, the only question, the only thing I would like to say is we need to give them more power so they have the ability to do the performance evaluation for the housing officers for attending those TRs. Yeah, they don't have it. <coughs> and that is an issue. And if, uh, I also really want to talk to Sarah's point. I'm sorry. It was really important. Yeah. It was about people leaving prison and how complex people's lives are. And, ju and just the problem is, and it's what you said right at the beginning, is that actually most answers are shades of grey stuff. Yeah. It's not lock them up or it's not, you know, give them free reign. It's something in the middle. And, uh, and I just go back to the point about actually people with expertise are people like TCAM, people like St. Giles who do okay. lots of work with expertise as well. So, uh, but I would just say I think that's where it's really important to do cross-party stuff and not do the kind of ping-pong stuff. Um, in terms of uh, we actually this week called in at scrutiny some decisions that were being made around tenants, uh, group of tenants funding and again it was one of these things where it's got very polarised it's been tenants against council and actually cross-party scrutiny committee were able to find <coughs> make some progress with that. But the fundamental point is that people need power over their own lives and far too often CRAs are told exactly how to run their meetings, how to do this, what forms to fill in, and actually there's no genuine freedom yeah, in how they run their affairs. I've got gentlemen here. I've got, and then I've got one there and one at the back, and then we've finished. I'm going to take all three so that we can hear you and get these to answer the one that they want to. Uh, I'm Mujdan Asawi, uh, Chair of Southwark Community, community Forum and as well as the Chair of the, our community, the Ahwazi Arab community in the uh, borough. It's, uh, it's borough of Southwark is the most, uh, the most is, uh, area we've got is migrants and the refugee uh, background. And I, as the Chair of the uh, Forum, we used to get a lot of support from the Council, mm -hmm. but because of the cut, the cutting, and now we lost a lot of uh, community. We used to be about 36 community, and now we got is half of that is community. And we used to support it for training is the women and the, the uh, other is migrant. But unfortunately, because of the cutting, we lost a lot of them. Okay, so you've lost um, people are <coughs> not able to access services because, because of there is the funding there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Something kind of correct. I'm an Indian migrant of 28 years. I'm self-employed. <laughs> And I felt welcome as part of the political, working, and community association for the last 28 years until yesterday. Okay. I got a leaflet through my door yesterday saying I'm stealing local people's jobs yeah, from your party, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that guts me. I feel unwelcome. Yeah, um, that's, a personal, welcome, that's, a personal, that's a personal comment. I'd like to make a comment to thank yeah. all the, 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 uh, the contributors for today who, who didn't attack each other, except for the Tories who attacked the other party. We not, the Slices are not able to understand what your manifesto is for Southwark because there is no Southern White Manifesto. And you say you're part of professional, you've no, white, you've no professional manifesto. Now I've my question. My question is, my question is, 
I want to speak on behalf of 400 people who died in the last, 400 years, of the last four years from traffic and cycling and pedestrian accidents in Southern. The thousands of people who, who are suffering from illnesses of heart and lung because the, the air is polluted, and the tens of thousands of Southern residents who are sick and unwell and clinical beat because they're afraid to cycle. Which of your parties will commit to having a fully segregated cycle network like they have in Europe and will spend at least 10% of our transport budget on, on segregated cycling? Okay, thank you. Thanks. And the lady at the back. Um, I'd just like to ask a question about um, voluntary sector generally and commissioning and or grant funding. Um, we know there's been a lot of changes politically in terms of how organisations are funded. We understand the financial constraints, but I'd like my question is basically um, your take on local organisations, voluntary sector organisations, as opposed to national organisations.
probably that's not quite wide enough, but it's a good soundbite. A to A means, yes, segregated cycle routes, but also the network of other roads. So you don't feel you have to just go on the bit of blue paint that's been painted on the road, but you can cycle anywhere within the borough, and that's, that's what we'd like to do. I was, well, I was dreading the cycling <coughs> question because um, I cycle every day for over an hour a day at least. But it, it's not a subject I can be dispassionate about because one of the people closest to me in the world uh, was killed in a car while cycling. Um, I, we can't find that place because we're not in power, but we would work for safer cycling. I cycle everywhere. I was almost hit by a car last year. It ruins families. It ruins lives. Cycling should be safe, it should be fun, it should be free and fair for everybody, and there needs to be a hell of a lot more done. But we do have a policy which is to improve the situation, but it would be so easy for me to stand here and go, yeah, we'll sign your policy. We, we'd have to sit down once we're in power and look at how to do it. But I promise you, if you vote for me, if you can, um, uh, you'd have no greater champion when it comes to cycling safety. Thank you. Uh, well, yes, I would, uh, to some extent, for the first time this afternoon, have to <laughs> echo that in the sense that uh, I, too, uh, am a, a keen cyclist and would do much more if I could and have better conditioned legs than I have sadly got at the moment. But I agree that the fear of, uh, of accidents and the amount of, uh, of accidents that have occurred in the space of recent 12 months is shocking, really. And I, I don't think some of the cycle lanes that we've got, you could even really call cycle lanes as such. There's probably been a bit of a waste of money having those. And uh, I think segregation is probably the way. But on advisement from the cycling network, Barry Mason, who uh, sadly passed away uh, uh, just over a year ago and was um, the leader and Sonic Cyclist, if you recall, Donnie, he, he would be someone who I would seek advice from. So maybe you, uh, if we had any say in how to allocate money, 10% uh, of the infrastructure, I don't know how much that even is, actually. Uh, at the moment, uh, sorry, sir. but we would be very supportive of a much better, more meaningful, safe cycle network in Southern. I would answer the question from uh, uh, Camilla, I think, is the chair of CF and, uh, and also Southern Care, but uh, we would conspicuously and primarily uh, emphasize and go towards the local rather than national provider of care in the voluntary care sector, and uh, we would be particularly keen to welcome uh, a way of working this out in the health and social care sector through a, a, a <coughs> tweaking of the health watch, which we believe should be an elected by a health council. Uh, and we don't need to rewrite the, the, the law of 2013, the, the health education, uh, the, sorry, uh, health and social care act. Uh, we can just rewrite the contract that the provider of health watch has got with the council and, the, and, and, and make it into an elected body and link it also into community councils and I think that there's uh, a lot of exploration there. Um, and for the uh, gentleman, I didn't catch your first name, sir, from the Adwazia Borough community. A again, I would have to say, I don't know what the merits of your case was when they cut you uh, and some of your, or all of your funding, and naturally I regret that because we don't want uh, any organization that has me to, to be turned away. And so we would definitely try and look at seeing if you may have unfairly lost out from some of the cake. And finally, to the, uh, the, the, the leaflet that upset you, uh, Donnie, uh, of course I will remember you when you were a councillor. Of course I know that you've been in Southwark for years and uh, uh, a pioneering in your recycling of energy in particular, and you've never been unwelcome as far as I'm concerned, and nor, nor, nor will ever be, uh, as long as I'm a member of UKIP, and I don't detect any attitude from any of my colleagues in UKIP. You've misread the situation, perhaps unintentionally, by the choice of language in the leaflet. If it's the language that's wrong, I apologize for it. It's not that we're making, uh, that we're saying that you're not welcome here. We are glad that everyone who's in this room is here in this room, and everyone who's able to get a job or wants to get a job. European migrants have taken British jobs. I'm a European migrant. I'm saying, you know, I'm saying that. I'm European migrant. Well, you make me unwelcome. Generationally, so am I, and I think there's other speakers in the panel who've mm -hmm. said the same as some themselves. So you're no special case there. No, what we're saying is that an uncontrolled border for the people of the e EU to come as, we, as and when they want with all the rights that, that they can have, that we have, 
is, is, a, is a recipe for, 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 for disaster. Okay. Uh, well, I just think that shows how, how uh, really offensive UKIP's fundamental basis and policies are, quite frankly. Because if you've got to explain and apologise to everybody, or oh, it doesn't apply to you, it doesn't apply to you, it doesn't apply to you, there's something wrong with the underlying values and philosophy, so you've got to excuse yourself for everything that you're saying, John. Um, look, can I um, just say, Brenda, uh, w we've got some national leading local charities, actually. We've got national best practice going on in our local charities, so we always choose uh, to work with uh, local charities. Donna, on, on cycling, you have been one of my fiercest critics uh, over the last four years, quite rightly so, because I think it's really important that we keep cycling stop. And I think you, you, know, you have done a huge job in persuading me that segregation for cyclists is the way forward. And I think we were wrong, actually, because I think we, we, we were living in a, uh, a, a world where we aspired to create roads where everyone could move around safely, cyclists, pedestrians, other road users, and I think that was ahead of where we were actually were in reality on the ground. And so you know that we have uh, brought in Dutch expertise now to train our officers to look at our roads in a completely different way. We contributed to a London-wide debate uh, just a couple of months ago about what we were doing in Southwark and trying to get the mayor and others interested. And Chris Baldwin was there, who is clearly also passionate about segregated cycling and proper cycling facilities for people. So I want Southwark, I do want Southwark, I haven't said this glibly just to say it, I do want Southwark to be the safest borough in London for cyclists. Uh, and, and that is, I hope, what we're going to achieve over the next four years and make real strides to achieving that. I really say that because I mean it, because every time there is an accident, in particular fatality in our borough, you know, it really does cut me because it's just, you know... Uh, anyway, look, and can I say to you, sir, uh, I'm sorry that, that there's been cuts to uh, funding uh, of your organisation. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier on, we've had to take £80 million pounds out of our budget 28% of our budget from central government have gone over the last four years, and that has meant that certain things have had to go, some cuts have to be made, uh, and that means that some voluntary organisations have been impacted as well. But I think we do carry on to support refugee communities, uh, and if there's a particular aspect of, of how your case is handled, please do talk to me. I'll give you my card uh, afterwards, and we can mm -hmm. explore how things can be taken forward. But th there's no doubt, I think, that this has been a council that has been supportive and continue to be supportive of the amazing work our national leading charities do uh, and our voluntary sector does across our borough. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks very much. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. um, thanks very much. Um, I, as you said, uh, I came to the UK when I was nine years old um, because the Gulf War was happening in Kuwait where I was living with my family at the time. Uh, we were actually very lucky. We could stay with my grandmother who lived in Camberwell uh, and so we weren't as badly off as many refugees but I certainly... Uh, understand the support that people need when they're going through incredibly traumatic uh, things that I can't even imagine. Uh, so thank you for the work you, your organisation does. Um, I mean, like I said, I think we'd be very happy, all of us, to talk about how we could, um, as a council, support you more. I think there is a danger that the council uses cuts as an excuse um, constantly. And actually, uh, if you look at the total budget of the council, that's 1.5 billion. So actually the percentage cut is smaller than is sometimes suggested. Um, but nobody's denying it is difficult economic times, and I think one of the criticisms we've made of the opposition is it's sometimes easier for the council to cut voluntary sector funding, because that's a sort of separate bit, uh, rather than look internally at making savings there. And in our budget this year, we came up with £9.3 million pounds worth of savings that could be made in catering, cabs, consultants, council spin, Solid life, um, all that kind of stuff that the council spends money on. So certainly on the cut point, I think there's much more work to do. Um, and I just touched earlier on what we could do with business in terms of their corporate social responsibility budget, because actually there's, there's stuff out there that's not just public money, but we could also try and bring in private sector money to support uh, you and other organisations. Um, on the cycling point, um, I mean, as Jonathan knows, we've had two cycling summits uh, organised by the South at Lived End, and that much of our manifesto, and we've got a whole section on cycling, comes from that. And I'll just very briefly uh, say it includes introducing protected cycle lanes along all main roads in Southwark, rolling out a new network of cycle facilities, including cycle stands, lockers, and bike repair stations, and extending what I'm not allowed to call the Boris Bike Scheme, uh, but you know what I mean. And plus also sorting out potholes and pavements for pedestrians and cyclists. So uh, I think we've got strong uh, things on cycling in our manifesto, uh, but you can always do more. And just uh, the final point is, um, 
One of the reasons I think that uh, or, uh, the public sector ends up funding the big nationals instead of the locals is because they're cheaper, but actually they are certainly poorer quality. Um, and it goes back to that point I was saying about if we can look more at quality uh, rather than just cost all the time, uh, I think that's where you'd absolutely reward that local knowledge and expertise uh, that all of you in this room have. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get through all that uh, needs to be done. It's, uh, but I did want to be fair to as many people as possible and try and get all of their points in. So I'm sorry I wasn't able to do that completely well. We've done well over time and Gordon's been flashing me daggers for the last <laughs> 10 minutes. I'd like to just put your hands together and thank uh, your would be councillors and leaders. <laughs> I'm sure you'll see the march and about uh, in all sorts of places. Thank you for giving up your time. Um, have a pleasant evening and I've failed as a dinner, please. <laughs>